Good morning, Sister D. Soap, where we've got scripture, we've got observation of those scriptures, we've got application of the scripture and prayer. Today, we're going to continue our conversation on the moment of grief as a healing journey. We started out this week by discussing four myths about grief. Myth number one, don't grieve. Myth number two, grief harms our faith. Myth number three, always be positive. And myth number four, God is absent. After we unpacked the myths about grief, we started to discuss the movements of how we began to process our emotions through grief positively. The first movement is joining. We discuss how God comes along beside us and joins us in our grieving process. On yesterday, we discussed how it's important not to normalize stormy emotions, but rather process those emotions. I would encourage you, my brothers and sisters, if you did not see the first three videos, please go back and check those out for your enrichment. Today, we will be discussing the third movement, which is understanding, the fourth movement, which is surrender, the fifth movement, which is praise. And we're going to conclude this series. Thank you so much for joining us. The third movement in our grief recovery is understanding. You see, while we may be ready to accept that God is not your enemy because of your loved one's death, you still may not understand why he chose to take them. Our questions may not find answers while we are here on earth, but we have chosen to walk by faith, believing that God was, is, and will be with us on earth and in heaven. And though grief is an inescapable part of the human condition, God demonstrates his love for us through his loving compassion. At some point, we arrive at a partial understanding of grief. To grapple with overwhelming loss and eventually adapt to it. You see, during this time, necessary changes must be made so that we can live with our loss in a healthy way. This occurs when our question changes from, why did this happen to me? Two, what can I learn from this and how can I best proceed with my life? As we begin to grow again, we will experience days that are more difficult than others. Tears, fears, and anger and confusion are still ahead, but God gives them to us to help release our feelings. We slowly begin to understand to accept this death, we also realize that grieving is a two-part process, the loss of a loved one and the recovery of our spirit. It is natural to want to return to the life we knew before this traumatic event occurred, but it is imperative that we live a new normal. 
We do this by refusing to be locked away in a tomb of agony for the remainder of our lives. And instead, we come to a place of surrender, which is the fourth movement in the grief recovery process. We must surrender. God's promise to deliver those who seek him. Surrender comes when we finally accept that we could not have changed our loved one's death. We accept that we are unable to turn back the hands of time. We cannot bring them back, nor are they coming back. We can get angry at God and remain stuck there. I'm sure you know some still angry over events that transpired decades ago. On the other hand, we can surrender to God and seek God's comfort, healing, and direction. You see, in the midst of grief's pain, neither choice seems attractive or acceptable. However, it is inevitable as we choose one or the other. Most believers at some point surrender their grieving to the Lord and in so doing, God comes to our side and answers our cries. God comes to our rescue. You see, surrender occurs when the bereaved accepts the loss of their loved one, readjusts their bond on a more spiritual level, and reorganizes their life. Death is a life-changing event, one that alters our view of life, our priorities, our work perception of God and his goodness in every other aspect of our life. Additionally, there are secondary losses that need to be acknowledged. For the woman who suddenly becomes a widow, the loss extends beyond her husband to the hopes and dreams that they had together. She has not only lost him, but dreams for the future and his involvement as her friend, lover, encourager, confidant, prayer partner, protector, tax preparer, business partner, and everything else. She must find new ways to have these needs met, trusting that God will provide. She must ask the Lord to give her strength to seek help from others, believing that he will provide for her. Shakespeare's Macbeth said, give sorrow words. The grief that does not speak knits up the o'erwrought heart and bids it break. Some people find that keeping a journal helps them work through the difficulties. You see, what we work out in our journals, we don't take out on our family and friends, is an old and wise saying. Another common healing step is to join a grief group in your church or community bringing uh, that pain to others who know and share the same grief. Resolving our loss and surrendering it occurs when we accept the hurt and the memories. But we can move on with a focus when we accept God's promise. I tell you the truth. You will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will turn to joy. 
according to the word of God in John chapter 16, verse 20. The last and final movement of our grief recovery process is praise. Again, Peter was a genius on suffering. He knew the secret of the power of praise, for it is recorded in the word of God where he said, In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may be proved genuine and may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 6 and 7. So how does one move beyond pain to the point of praise? It is impossible by our own strength. But miracles happen when we ask God to empower us. By now we understand the loss. We have surrendered to God and have changed our relationship with our loved one. Uh, unable to see or talk with them as we once did, we learn to develop new ways of remembering and relating to that precious person. Good and bad memories will remain. You now say, yes, unfortunately, this did happen to me, but you also don't postpone the pain. You don't deny it occurred and you don't minimize your loss. The next step is to find new ways to exist and to function. This involves developing a new identity, but without forgetting your loved one. You, you discover new ways to redirect the emotional investments you placed in the person now that is gone. You learn how to take care of yourself by yourself and with the help of others who become precious in your new life. Admit and accept you need the support, help, and comfort of other people during your time of loss. Isolation can be deadly. A friend or even an acquaintance can help you through this difficult time. Remove your fear of abandonment and assist with your depression. Other people can encourage you to continue to function. They offer you their hope and faith when yours has vanished. Finally, open your mouth and sing again. Choose to praise and thank God as a spiritual discipline. Don't depend on your feelings to praise, but do rejoice when your feelings reinforce such action for God is worthy of praise because he has poured out you the faith and love from the hope that is stored up for you in heaven in Colossians 1 and 5. Therefore, the text says, set your heart on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things for you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. My brothers and sisters, imagine it and stay with it until your imagination breaks through with the glorious views in your mind's eye of being with Jesus in his heavenly kingdom. Imagine, if you will, imagine your loved one with Jesus right now full of joy and peace and glory from the nearness of his glory. John envisions the new Jerusalem in Revelation 21 as the dwelling of God with men and he will live with them. Oh my God. They will be his people and God himself will be with them and be their God and he will wipe 
every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things has passed away. He who is seated on the throne said, I am making everything new in verses three through four. Oh, my brothers and sisters, oh, what a wonderful day coming soon. Oh, wonderful King Jesus, come quickly. Don't have to come now. No man knows the day or hour, but Lord, come quickly. Amen. Amen. I pray my brothers and sisters that this series has been a blessing for you. I pray that God will release you to process in your healing. Let us pray. Oh my soul, do not blame God. He is not at fault for the evil of this world or the suffering of life. God is big enough to handle any blame, shame, confusion, and fear that I carry. Oh my God, help me cope, help me cry, help me learn, help me grow through this situation. Draw me close to yourself and fill my heart with your love, my mind with yourself. You are able, enable me, oh God. Oh, my soul, remember that our beloved one is merely asleep in death. And while with joy right now in the presence of God, remember that God wants touch my broken heart. In Christ on the cross, he knows my pain in his resurrection from the dead. He is my only hope. Oh God, let me know that your thoughts toward me have no harm in them at all, but that you are full of plans to give me a future and a hope. Deliver me from this unspeakable sorrow. Heal me from this merciless pain. Oh God, into your hands I give my life. Take it and do what you will with it. Oh my soul, sing to the Lord a new song. Praise his mighty ways. Shout how great is our God. And wonderful is his love. There is no love greater than the agape love of God. Oh God, bring me into your heavenly presence. Heal me of the darkness in my sorrow, the grief that crushes my heart. And I thank you now, God, in the name of Jesus, you are the captain of my soul and nothing is impossible for you in you i can truly do all things even this in jesus mighty name amen my brothers and sisters as we close out this series today i need us to understand there is no prescribed timetable for grieving for most it takes two to three years to work through the loss of a close loved one. Sometimes it is a lifetime, a lifetime journey. It encompasses peaks and valleys and are initially intense. The peaks eventually become less severe and the valleys level out after time, but they do not disappear. Be extra kind to yourself during this time and diligent about your health. It's okay to go to bed earlier than normal. 
to take naps and to spend more time in a long bath. Grieving takes enormous energy and your body needs more rest. Setting goals for your future may be difficult at this time. You probably feel that you, a part of you also died in that moment but it will help you work through the grief process. Answer these questions in a journal in your quiet time. Number one, what do I want to be doing this time next year? What is it that I've always wanted to do but haven't gotten around to doing? Number two, who is someone I'd like to visit that I haven't seen in years? My brothers and sisters, goals are important because they force us to invest current energy in a long-term project. Others around you may be uncomfortable with your grief, wanting you to return to normal as soon as possible. If you're not ready, don't let others determine it for you. This is your loss and no one else's. It is all right for you to take charge and let others know what you need. Consider telling others, when I am crying, I don't need to be fixed. But you see, tears are necessary for me to walk through or work through the process of healing. Tell them they don't have to avoid mentioning your loss. Encourage them to call and see how you are doing and not to be put off by your fluctuating emotions. And in the Beatitudes, Jesus promised that the needs of the bereaved would not go unmet. The text says, blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted in Matthew chapter 5 verse 4. The word for comfort is taken from the Greek word parakaleo, which means one who stands alongside. Mourning openly is a form of self-disclosure. We do not have to hide from God, but God is walking alongside us right now as we experience our grief. We need to reveal ourselves to him and he will strengthen us with his divine love. My brothers and sisters, I pray this series has been a blessing to you. I am praying for your recovery in Jesus name. God bless you. See you next week. Peace. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. We love you, we love you, we love you. We pray all is well with each of you. Skylar, happy birthday from Anaya and I. Amen. And we are praying for you. God bless you. Go wave everybody bye. Everybody what? Bye. You gonna tell them bye? You gonna tell them bye? Hmm? Say bye-bye. Yay! <laughs> all right. God bless y'all till next time. Peace.